and we're doing number eight of the stoichiometry problems. The question says, identify the limiting reactant when 4.687 grams of sulfur tetrafluoride reacts with 6.281 grams of diiodine pentoxide to produce iodine pentafluoride and sulfur dioxide. So I've written all the chemicals involved. I'm assuming all of them are got in the gaseous state, although some of them are probably solids at room temperature. We'll assume the, temp the reaction has been done at a higher temperature, so it causes them all to volatilize. We, I've written down the grams of each substance under the, under the substance. So here's the grams of I205, here's the grams of sulfur tetrafluoride, and I've divided by the molar mass of each one to find out how many moles. So we're going to moles. We're going to moles, uh, find out the moles of SF4, the moles of I205. The next step in the calculation is to find the limiting reagent. So I'm going to pick one of these two chemicals. And it doesn't matter which one I pick as long as I follow the procedure correctly. So I picked uh, sulfur tetrafluoride because I had a hunch it would be the limiting reagent just by looking at the numbers. And even if I did pick the wrong one, you'll see it won't matter. So I picked this one and I did the calculation for this, using the stoichiometry of the balanced equation. And I did check to make sure that the equation was balanced. Uh, five sulfurs here, five sulfurs there, uh, 20 fluorines, 20 fluorines. Four iodines, four iodines, ten oxygens, and ten oxygens. So the equation is balanced. Everything that's on the left is also appearing on the right. And that gives us a stoichiometry of two to five for iodine, uh, diiodine pentoxide, and sulfur tetrafluoride. I put the five sulfur uh, tetrafluoride on the bottom because I want to cancel the moles of sulfur tetrafluoride. And the result is that it will require 1.73 moles of I2O5 to be present for the reaction to be go to completion. As it turns out, we have a bit more than that. So that what that tells us is that this is the limiting reagent. SF4 is the limiting reagent. So all the calculations that we do from now on will be starting from the amount of SF4. And that is if they ask you how much of IF5 or SO2 is, is left. But we didn't go that way. What we did is I asked how many grams of I205 are left after the reaction. So what I did is I subtracted the amount used from the amount that was present, and we get how many moles are left. And now I went from moles to grams by multiplying by the molar mass. So here's the moles of I205 left over after the reaction times the molar mass of I205. Tells us there's 0.4895 grams left over. I rounded to four significant figures. And that is what's left over of I205. Now, somebody asked, after I did this calculation, somebody said, what if you had picked the other one? What if you had started the calculation with this number instead of that number? I said, OK, let's do that and see what we get as a result. So I started with a, a number of moles of I205. And I entered the stoichiometry for the reaction, which is 5 moles of SF4 period for every 2 moles of I205. Uh, uh, sorry. 5 moles of SF4 disappearing, but 2 moles of I205 disappearing. And the result is that you get 4.7 times 10 to the minus 2 moles of SF4. Uh, but as you can see from our earlier calculation, you only have 4.33 moles of SF4, which means you don't have enough SF4 to react with all the I205 that is present. So we come to the same conclusion. The SF4 is limiting. So any calculations of yield must begin by using the quantity of SF4. So the calculations from that point on will be identical to the first calculation. You'd have to do the same thing uh, regarding any calculations of IF5 or SO2 quantities made. You'd have to start with, uh, with the amount of SF4 that you had at the beginning, because that is the limiting equation. That determines when the reaction is going to stop. Okay, for number nine, which is the next question on your handout, uh, you're asked if 4.1 grams of chromium is heated with 9.3 grams of chlorine, what mass of the chromium chloride will be produced? All right, so we have to, first of all, um, balance the equation. Chromium or chlorine gives you chromium chloride. And you get, uh, you divide by the molar masses of the balanced equations, so you're going to find the number of moles. You always go to moles. Find the limiting reagent, next step, and then find the limiting reagent, find the yield. Okay, we'll stop it there.